Now that we've discussed all the possible stress options, we can talk about combined stress because of course there's never just one stress happening at a time. So I've got everything all written out here and the very first thing I'm going to do is mark out the averages because average stresses are not exact distribution of forces over an area. They're generalized and if we're looking at a combined stress, we need the exact distribution of forces. So averages are going to go and we're going to stick with axial bending, thin wall pressure vessel, torsional, and transverse. The next thing that we need to discuss is that there is no resultant stress. So there is no such thing as some sort of normal stress by shear stress squared. That, that doesn't exist. We are either acting perpendicular to the surface or parallel to the surface, period, the end. What we do have is superposition where we can combine the axial stresses and the bending stresses and the thin wall pressure vessel stresses together or the superposition of the shear stresses acting together. My first example here is a cantilevered beam. It has a rectangular cross section of, at AA that I've got shown over here to the right. It is six inches tall by two inches thick into the page. And cross section AA occurs at three feet from the load of 1300 pounds. That load is acting through the center of the cross section. I wish to find the state of stress at point A acting on cross section AA. I've got it drawn over here in purple. I'm going to start by figuring out what internal forces I have going on here so I can figure out what internal stresses I need to solve for. So I'm gonna draw my section here at AA and I'm going to have a shear, a normal, and a moment force. Since the 1300 is acting in plane with the XY surface, it's not going to create a torque. Uh, also because it's acting through the center of the cross section. I'm also going to break up that force into two components. So we'll have 1200 pounds acting horizontally. 500 pounds acting vertically, and it's still acting at three feet from section AA. We find using equilibrium that the shear is equal to 500 pounds. The normal force is equal to 1200 pounds in tension. And that our moment at AA is equal to negative 1,500 pound feet, meaning that there's compression in the bottom of the cross section. I can draw this on my cross section up here, where I will have positive shear. I will have my normal force and tension, so that's acting in the x direction. And then I will have the compression in the bottom for my moment, so a curvy line here, moment. I know that's really messy, but at least you can see it on the cross section. Now that I have these forces, I can do my stresses. Since I have an axial normal stress, a uh, normal force, I can solve for an axial normal stress. So my axial stress at A will equal to that normal force, 1200 pounds in tension, all over the cross sectional area, two inches by six inches. And that gives me an axial normal stress at A of 100 PSI in tension. I also have a bending stress due to moment. So my bending stress at A is going to be the internal moment at A, 1500 pound feet times the distance of A from the neutral axis, which is one and a half inches all over the centroidal moment of inertia about the neutral axis, which is going to be two inches by six inches cubed, divided by 12, and making sure to convert that moment uh, to pound inches. I have a bending stress at A of 750 PSI. And coming back here on our picture, we see that A is on the tension side of that negative moment. So we are going to be in 
tension here at A. The last internal force I have is shear, so I need a transverse shear calculation. My transverse shear at A is going to be the internal shear force, 500 pounds, times the first moment of area above or below A. So coming up here, drawing my shear line at A, I'm going to take this area above for my Q. So that is going to give me a base of 2 inches, a height of an inch and a half, and a distance to the centroid of A prime to the neutral axis of two and a quarter inches for my Q all over same moment of inertia two inches by six inches cubed divided by 12 and the thickness of my shear line two inches that gives me a transverse shear value of 46.875 PSI and my shear force was positive, which means my transverse shear is also positive. What we see with our individual stresses is that we have two stresses that are acting at A in the normal direction and one stress that is acting at A in the shear direction. So my two normal directions need to be added together to get a final normal stress at A. There's only one shear stress, so there will be only one component to the shear stress at A. If I were to look at my stress distributions at A, my axial normal stress would be in tension, constant across the cross-section, with a magnitude of 100 psi. And note how I've drawn it acting away from the surface at A. This is a side view of the beam, indicating that it is acting in tension. My bending stress at A is going to have that triangular shape. And since the moment has compression in the bottom, the stress is going to have compression in the bottom. And I solved for A to have a magnitude of 750 PSI in tension. So if I were to combine the axial normal stress and the bending normal stress, I would have this combined stress distribution that would be a little bit heavier on the tension side and a little bit less on the bending, uh, the compression side because the axial normal force is in tension so that's going to make more tension uh, all the arrows are pointing right so that's going to be more right arrows and less left arrows and that means that this combined stress at A is going to be 750 plus 100 which is 850 psi in tension I can also so show the state of stress on A. So my shear stress is positive, so that means that my arrows are going to go this way for positive shear stress with a magnitude of 46.9 PSI. And if I set up my X and Y orientation this way, then my normal is going to be in tension in the X direction of 850 PSI. And I know that it's acting in the X direction because all the way up here I have the orientation of my cantilever in the Y X plane. So normal to the cross-sectional area that's in the Y Z plane would be the X direction. In this example we have a bent solid bar that has a 30 newton load acting at 100 millimeters off the corner. The bent bar acts entirely in the XY plane. The system has a radius of 15 millimeters. Find the state of stress at points A, B, and D. So just like the last problem, the very first thing that I want to do is find out what internal forces are acting at section BB and then I can find the stresses that coincide with those forces. So I've set up a free body diagram at section BB of the cantilevered end of the pipe, and I have my three translative forces, FX, FY, and FZ, and then I have my three moment forces, MX, MY, and Z, all acting in the positive direction.
solving for equilibrium, I find that force x is equal to zero, force y is equal to zero, and force z is equal to negative 30 newtons. I find that moment x is equal to 3,000 newton millimeters. Moment y is equal to 6,000 newton millimeters. And moment z is equal to zero. I need to know which ones are shear and which ones are normal forces. Shear acts parallel to the surface of the cross section. So if my cross section is acting in the y, z plane, that means my shear directions are going to be y and z. So that leaves force x as my normal force because it is acting perpendicular to the cross section's surface. That also means that moment y and moment z remain what we've been calling moments in uh, this class, where moment x will be what we call torque because it is rotating about that axis um, that BB is perpendicular to. If I were to draw these forces on my cross section here, I would have shear Z acting in the Z direction. I would have moment Y acting about the Y axis, causing compression in the bottom. 6,000 Newton millimeters. And then I would have torque acting about the x-axis, which in this case is coming out of the page. So I'm going to draw it as a rotational vector here about the cross-section. So I flipped my shear at z because it's actually acting negative. So convention is to draw that acting up on the cross-section. So it looks like here that the forces I have are torque, moment, and shear. So the stresses I need to calculate for are torque, moment, and shear. Starting with torque, T rho over J. T and J will remain unchanged for this cross section. So the only variable I have for the cross section is rho. And we notice that points A, B, and D all act on the outer surface of my cross section so they all have the same rho, meaning that their torsional stress magnitude is the same. So that'll be a torque load of 3,000 newton millimeters, acting at a distance of 15 millimeters from the center of the cross section, all over the polar moment of inertia for a solid cross section, pi over two, times 15 millimeters to the fourth. So my torsional shear stress value is equal to 0 0.5659 newtons per millimeter squared. Next is shear. The transverse shear day is going to be the shear force 30 newtons times Q, so that's going to be half a circle, and then the distance from half a circle to the flat part is 4R over 3 pi divided by inertia pi over 4 times 15 millimeters squared. And then the shear line is the diameter, that is 30 millimeters. And this is going to give us a value of 0 0.05659 newtons per millimeter squared. Bending stress is the last calculation. And we see that A acts on the neutral axis and uh, that makes the bending stress at A equal to zero. 
and then B and D act at the same distance from the neutral axis, so they're going to have the same magnitude but opposite directions. So we will put absolute values here. And that is equal to my moment. Times the distance from the neutral axis. All over the moment of inertia for the circular cross section. Pi over 4 times 15 millimeters to the fourth. I wrote that incorrectly up there. And that is equal to a bending stress magnitude of 2.264 newtons per millimeter squared. And with the way that this moment is drawn, B is going to be in compression. And D is going to be in tension. I only have one load here that is causing normal stress. So my combined normal stress is going to just be that bending stress. So my normal stress at A is equal to zero. My normal stress at B is equal to a negative 2.26, and that will be megapascals. And my normal stress at D will be a positive 2.26 megapascals. I do have combined shear stress at A, so we need to make that happen. And what I've done down here is I've drawn my shear stress distributions for torsional shear stress. So we've got this fan shape at A, B, and D. And then I've got my transverse shear stress drawn over here where they're both parallel to this cross-sectional circular section. You will see at D and B, I experience no transverse shear but I do have torsion acting in that Y direction. And you'll see at A that I have transverse shear acting up. That's the same direction as shear stress, uh, as the shear force in the Z direction. And then my torsional shear stress at A is also acting up because it needs to be a counterclockwise couple to make that counterclockwise torque on my cross section. So my shear at A is going to be the 566 kilopascals plus the 56.6 kilopascals for the transverse shear, which makes a total shear at A, making my shear at A 623 kilopascals. For the record, that's negative because it's pointing up on the cross section because shear is weird. Shear at B is equal to 566 kilopascals and shear at D is also equal to 566 kilopascals. D will be in the positive direction and B in the negative.